Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today, I have Ryan from the channel Crypto Fiend. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. It is an absolute pleasure to be here, and I am uh, very happy to uh, spread the word of this very promising project. Right on. Well, he said it best. It's a promising project. We're talking about Unibright today. Uh, and I just want to let you know, we're going to be talking about the tech today, what Unibright's tech stack looks like, what's their offering, what does a UBT token do, and all that sort of good stuff. But if you want to learn about the really, really important partnerships that Unibright has been putting together and killing it, I might add, please head over to Ryan's channel. I'll link that video down below for you to watch after this one about all of that. So without further ado, let's hash out some of these Unibright technology details. Let's so, do it. Awesome, man. So I think the best place to start is to help people understand the world of enterprise tech today and what these solutions are composed of. And a lot of the things that you see now are, you'll see pretty standard tech stacks. You've got people running on cloud infrastructure. So you got Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and then they run all sorts of apps and middlewares and websites and all sorts of things on that infrastructure. And all of that oftentimes is a part of a product. So they have custom off the shelf products that you get and you have to do minimal customization. They have modular pro products like uh, SAP and Oracle and things that help you run your business. Now, this was the first revolution that happened when the internet came into the mix and businesses tried to get involved in it. These businesses make so much money today because they've abstracted the complexities of building custom software for your business into packages that you can buy and that you can spin up in a series of clicks and with minimal effort. So that's really where Unibright is starting to play is they're saying blockchain is something that enterprises want to get involved in. This is something that offers significant cost savings, increased business relationships, new business models, and a bunch of other different benefits within enterprises. But it's very costly because blockchain developers are few and far between and they cost a fortune. And beyond that, a lot of businesses don't know where to start. So Unibright's built out this low or no code solution to allow you to, as an enterprise, spin up smart contract based applications from templates and publish them out to the blockchain. So in this case, they're very much Ethereum focused right now, but I think we're probably going to see them spread out further to different protocols in, in the future. I think there's definitely potential there. So the first piece of tech that I wanted to talk about is just that. Uh, it's called the UB workflow designer. And this is sort of the module that an enterprise can go and pick up and they with no blockchain experience, no knowledge about blockchain and no development resources for this part of the project, set up a visual workflow. So let's say you're dealing with supply chain, for example, and you have a workflow where a digital asset moves from one person to the next, to the next, to the next, until it gets to an end consumer. You can set up that workflow in a visual graphic user interface. And this Unibright solution is going to put together a basically a blockchain ecosystem with smart contracts to establish that workflow on chain, get everything connected up. So Ryan, for someone that doesn't come from a tech background, you're very much focused on the business side of things and how things work and why they're really powerful. What do, what do you, how do you feel about something like this where you don't need to code to build this stuff? It's, it's definitely a different approach. You know, a couple of years back, I would have never thought any of this would be a thing, uh, but I think it's definitely, definitely needed right now, especially mm -hmm. of course in blockchain. Uh, you know, you have all these companies out there that hear about blockchain. It sounds great. It has phenomenal use cases never seen before, mm -hmm. um, but these companies can't integrate it right now. You know, mm -hmm. it's way too expensive. I believe the average cost um, to integrate blockchain um, into your current databases and all that is between 500 to a million dollars yeah. a year. Um, and that's not suitable for the majority of companies. So what Unibright is doing is absolutely genius. It's needed. And, you know, in the long run, they're going to be a major, major driving force when it comes to institutions, corporations, mm -hmm. and even retail uh, consumers coming into the cryptocurrency space. And mm -hmm. of course, blockchain. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is so cool because my day-to-day my -day job is building smart contracts often. And I do a lot of other traditional application stuff as well. Um, you know, web applications, mobile applications that interface with enterprise systems and blockchain networks. And so this would make part of my job a lot easier because I'll have security audited 
bug free to the greatest extent smart contracts based on a template. That's powerful. I'm a little bit worried about it, to be honest, though, because this might put me out of a big part of my job, which is doing the smart contracts, which I really like doing. Granted, it'll be easier. I don't I don't think this is going to totally replace the blockchain developer, though, because I think there are going to be a lot of uh, use cases and custom things that you want to do with a blockchain network that the templates might not have yet, or you want to build something on the outside. You might want to integrate a, a different app with your, your smart contracts. So I think there's still room, but this workflow designer is going to be really powerful. Um, so I also wanted to bring this up. One of the things that people often forget about is, you know, cloud computing and the prevalence of cloud computing. And oftentimes it's thought of just as infrastructure, but in reality, what makes AWS a huge business and one that dominates massive, massive industries in enterprise tech is that they've abstracted away all the complexity in building simple things that you need for your business, like an email server, like mm -hmm. uh, bucket file storage with Amazon S3 all the way down to database services and all these things, you can, in a wizard, basically click and configure this server for yourself, and then you can go from there. So it gives you that base level protocol to work from and, and build. Now, this makes integration so much easier for developers and or enterprises alike. So I think Unibright has taken this and said, let's abstract the most painful part of blockchain technology for an enterprise, and that is interfacing with the blockchain itself. That's where all of the work is to make an app work and to integrate it with what you have. So they have something called the UB contract interface, which basically stems from what you do in the workflow designer. And it basically allows you to make changes to previously implemented contracts and workflows from the workflow designer. And it allows them, or it allows you to publish these smart contracts and continue to maintain them for the rest of time. But what it does that's most powerful is it allows you to generate adapters, basically middlewares that integrate your systems with the smart contracts that you've put out onto the blockchain. So this high level of abstraction for the interfacing with the blockchain network is something that I think I will appreciate the most if I get to use this stuff in, you know, in my day job. It's, it's something that people that learn this this technology should focus on if you're a developer because it is the it's the money maker for sure because the, the complicated parts of it are all after your contract is done and making sure that it works the way you want with the other systems that you want it to work with so ub contract yeah. interface huge yeah i completely agree and you said it best with uh, aws uh, I think Mark Cuban is phenomenal at really giving a good overview as mm -hmm. to where we currently stand in cryptocurrencies and blockchain, yeah. where it needs to go. Uh, you know, he's really focused on saying people don't want to know about the technicals. They don't want to know how blockchain works. They just want to use it and they want it to work. They want to use it without even knowing they're using it. And it's kind of like most people get into their car every day and they drive down the road. They don't know how that thing works, but it gets them from point A to point B. And I think Unibright is going in that direction mm -hmm. and uh, they're doing it in a very uh, tasteful way, uh, especially jumping into the enterprise sector for sure. Definitely. You know, this contract interface is a place where you can just basically manage your smart contracts, dealing with the, you know, publishing new contracts, updating existing ones, even in the future, maybe pushing one contract to a specific chain and another to another chain. That's really where this contract interface plays. Then we move into the thing that I think takes that, I guess, abstraction of what, what I would call middlewares and APIs to the next level. And that is the UB or Unibright connector service. So this is basically something that allows you to take those workflows that you've set up and the contracts that you've set up and integrate them and the data that comes from it with your off-chain services. So that could be a company's existing SAP enterprise resource planning system. So if we go back to our supply chain use case, they might track each movement of a certain asset and it, the person who owns it at that time using SAP. But they might want to facilitate payment for those products and track those specific uh, custodianships on the blockchain first and then publish back to SAP afterwards. That would be a great use case for this connector. But it would take out arguably the most volume of code that you have to write for a blockchain application. And that's all these specific APIs, application programming interfaces and handlers to handle each action and all the data that comes from these contracts with the systems that you have. So 
to give you a little bit of background, right now when a, an enterprise starts to play with blockchain, they start to work with it and they start to invest in it, they might build a proof of concept. And that's basically, can we make a smart contract based application, you know, create five blockchain nodes in AWS and, and simulate what this would look like and then run that data into a sample version of what we have in our current systems. A lot of these projects die before they ever get the chance to truly integrate with the real systems that would run their day-to-day -day operations. And that means they've now spent money on something that's not usable. And B, they've run out of investment dollars and patience with this before they've gotten to the real money maker and they've gotten to really adopt it. Um, you know, so there's been varying levels of success, but I think the UB connector interface would be huge to take even a POC that you've already built and enable you to connect it to what you already have in terms of enterprise tech without a bunch of overhead and extra costs to build from scratch. So I would say if anything in this solution is underrated, it would be this UB connector. I think there's so much potential for this to create interfaces with ERPs, CRMs, all sorts of things, workflow management tools that we have in enterprise tech today. I think it's fantastic. What are your thoughts? For sure. Yeah, and I think you said it said it right how um you know a lot of these companies are kind of kind of trying kind of trying to uh, beat around the bush they're trying mm -hmm. to not fully integrate the true the real deal you know they want mm -hmm. they want the knockoff that's not the route to go with blockchain technology either mm -hmm. you have it or you don't have it so i think uh, for sure being able to integrate uh with uh ubt connect into current companies mm -hmm. with their current software obviously would make the whole process a lot easier and of course cost affordable as well. Yeah. And I think that harkens back to the original mission of, of Unibright. That's to create uh, solutions that are blockchain oriented for enterprises that are low to no code. So very little technical overhead or technical debt involved, as well as making it a less nebulous and complicated to deal with when you're going through that process of establishing what to build because you're building out a workflow as you would as a business process manager. What do we do today and how do we turn this into a blockchain based process? I think that's, that's huge. So the final piece of this, I guess, Unibright tech stack or their product offering is called the UB Explorer. And this is very much like what you'd see in a traditional block explorer, but with a bunch of extra cool features on top of it. So think of this like the fancy user interface behind all of the smart contract work and all the um, adapters and connectors that you've worked on that we've talked about already. This allows you to check in on your smart contracts and all your data sources in those smart contracts. So we're talking state variables, events, custody of assets potentially, um, data structures, things that you've built into your smart contract and your blockchain applications that you wanna watch. It allows you to put those up in a dashboard format much like you'd see it's something like Click or ClickSense, that's a really popular mm -hmm. enterprise dashboarding tool. So I think this is huge. But what really makes it valuable is that you can uh, integrate or uh, collate all the information from your on-chain data, like your smart contracts, as well as your off-chain data, which is critical for any enterprise blockchain solution. I think people often think about enterprise blockchain as put move everything to the blockchain, whereas it's really let's move certain things to the blockchain because the blockchain is not a database and it doesn't do the database's job very well. It does other things very well. So you still need off-chain storage and tracking systems and other things that don't go on the blockchain itself. So you need to be able to, to organize those things together to make the blockchain valuable and the data that's on it valuable. So this would be, I guess, where you would imagine an analyst or a, a a business development manager or a manager within an organization, they could go in and check and have a one-stop shop for all the data within their enterprise. Yeah, for sure. I it's it is very fascinating to see Unibright hitting every single point needed for this infrastructure. Yeah, and they really are creating an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's either connecting with Chainlink, the uh, Ethereum, with these institutions. Having this interface obviously is crucial for these companies uh, to be able to, like you said, uh, manage, transfer assets, data, whatever it is. And uh, that is cool what you said, how um, 
you know, some data can be transferred, you know, you can have some off chain mm -hmm. uh, information and you can put some information on chain. I, I never personally thought about that. You know, I always thought, why not just put everything on the blockchain? But I, I guess there would be many reasons why a lot of companies wouldn't want to do that for privacy reasons, security. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, all that. even just respecting the blockchain for what it's good at, you know, uh, you know, dealing with, especially when we start to move to the, the public networks, which I think all organizations should be, should be gunning for. They should be trying to do that. Um, and we're going to talk about another tool for them to do that shortly. Um, putting all your data in a contract is the worst thing you can do because it's very expensive. You know, string, strings, basically like text or, you know, bulk data Uploading that to a smart contract and storing it in the contract is one of the most expensive operations you can do in a smart contract uh, execution call at over, overall. It's one of the most expensive things in gas. And so you have businesses that don't optimize their proof of concept in terms of what goes on chain and what doesn't. And then they think this is going to be too expensive to operate in mainnet when we're not using, you know, play ether, you know, fake ether. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very true. Part of the biggest job of a smart contract developer is optimizing for cost versus cost versus uh, functionality. Like what's the minimum viable product that we need to deliver and how can we do it efficiently? Because uh, we want people to go on mainnet, basically. So that's, that's a big part of it. And, and so moving businesses towards mainnet with that intention, you know, Unibright was a huge proponent and player in developing what is now hopefully going to be arbiter of mainnet, uh, mainnet moves for enterprise. And that's the baseline protocol. So this is basically a part of a big conglomerate with uh, a bunch of different businesses in, in the uh, Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. I think Imminent is, a, is the name of the consortia that organized this whole thing. And that's moving enterprises to the public net. Um, basically, in a nutshell, the baseline protocol packages up different functionalities like um, easy to use chain link oracles. That's one. It allows you to use zero knowledge proof based um, functionality to transmit data securely and to custody data securely. It allows you to quickly and easily tokenize assets and transmit them over the public blockchain without exposing private data or addresses. Uh, so these things are basically looking at, uh, Ryan, I think you mentioned it in your other video um, or in the other video, the three P's. Can you remind me what those three P's were in this protocol? Do you remember? Privacy. One was not a real word. Uh, permission. Permission. Permissionability. Ability. Yeah. So basically, yeah. these are like the three P's that people focus on for enterprise apps. Um, mm -hmm. And the reality is, is businesses don't want to go onto the public mainnet because they don't want to miss lose their privacy. They don't feel like they can control permissions to their data on the network. And what was the last one? Private transactions, permissioning, and performance. There you go. Performance was the one we we're looking for. And performance is only partially the responsibility of this, you know, I guess the baseline protocol, which is really just an interface, if you will. It's like a series of smart contracts and then um, sort of like middleware that sits between the enterprise and the blockchain network, the uh, uh, Ethereum net mainnet, that mm -hmm. makes all this stuff easy. It's basically like a package deal. But as we move to Ethereum 2.0, performance is going to be hopefully a lot better just at a, a baseline, pun intended, baseline protocol. Um, so I think it's going to start to hit all of these all these notes that people are looking for. Uh, so I'm I'm very excited by about this baseline protocol, and it's it's still in early stages. The the, the code base just got open sourced. I think the end of last month, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm still digging through it. There's a lot there. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot of development on that front. But the last place that I wanted to go in this uh, tech overview is the UBT token and what that is used for, why people would even want it, and, uh, and just generally give you an idea of what it's all about. This is not, however, a token economics you know, analysis or should you buy. This is just what it's used for. So... The UBT token is very much a true utility token and that it is the token that's going to fuel all of the products that we just talked about within the Unibright ecosystem, right? So if you're an enterprise and you want to set up your uh, workflow designer and you want to design a workflow, push it to the contract interface, start deploying your contracts and setting up the integrations, and then you want to set up all your connectors and do all that stuff, 
each of those processes that you go through and each of those services that you use are going to price based in UBT. So instead of you going on Amazon Web Services, you putting in a credit card, um, you're going to be billed using UBT tokens. So for example, if you're an enterprise, you want to deploy one contract and you want to see how much it's going to cost, you can go on, I think there's an online calculator now to tell you, okay, how much would it be to run this contract template for 30 days? And people can see what it would cost. Um, so there, that's a great thing to do. I'll leave a link to that calculator so you can play around and see what it would look like uh, for yourself. So I think the biggest thing people need to know about this UBT token is both sides of the argument. A lot of people are out there saying, well, if enterprises have to buy a token to use the service, are they ever going to do it? And I think if you measure by today's standards, you might think, no, they probably won't. But in reality, I think the way Unibright's going about it is going, we're going to show you how this works and we're going to show you how powerful it can be. And then we're going to show you how to get the token. We might help you help you get it, set them up and then show them how valuable it is. And then that's what's going to pull enterprises into understanding this method of, of paying for services. Um, and the real benefit here is that it's structured a lot like how enterprises are used to paying for things. It's pay as you go, pay as you use, rather than the traditional, like right now in the blockchain space for enterprise, you're probably paying $500,000, a million dollars for a production mm -hmm. ready, quote unquote, production ready blockchain solution. You could pay anywhere from 2.5 to $5 million to get it all integrated the way that you want it. Wow. And so rather than doing that, you might say, let's use this where it abstracts it away. We can start small and we can only pay for what we need. We can only pay for what we use. So that's when you move an asset using the smart contract templates and then it passes through the uh, interface, the uh, contract interface, and then the connectors to get to your SAP setup, you'll pay for that. But you're going to pay for that one transaction and what it did. You're not going to mm -hmm. pay a developer a bunch of hours to build that one thing out. So I guess it, it allows you to decide, let's pay as we go. Yeah, for sure. It, I love that. You know, that's like renting movies as you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, and, and some, look, some businesses are going to prefer that they pay up front for a solution and don't pay per transaction. But I think that that's the most, that's super viable in an environment where you're doing a, a pseudo private or private network because you're not paying network token fee anyway. And you don't have to worry about optimizing for cost on chain. But I think for someone who's trying to move to mainnet and doesn't have a lot of experience doing so and optimizing contracts, Unibright's a no brainer because you're not going to have to stress about it. It's going to be rolled into one efficient audited contract or maybe several, but you're only going to pay for it in, in UBT. So you're kind of, you're taken away from all the complexities of setting this up. And I think that's the biggest thing to take away. The UBT token is the fuel that drives all these tools that enterprises are going to use to, to operate with, with these things. So the bigger that enterprise adoption gets, which is hopefully you know, continuing to grow, theoretically, the, the more that interest in UBT would grow as well. For sure. And uh, one other thing I really like about UBT, and I talk about it more in my video, mm -hmm. um, is their overall approach to getting this out there. You know, they're not just sitting on the sidelines waiting for someone to come to them mm -hmm. or they're reaching out to a couple couple of their cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. um, they are, you know, on the front lines, having seminars, sitting down with big corporations saying, hey, this is what we can offer. We can show you exactly how this can be integrated in a seamless way. It can save you a shit ton of money in the long term. You might as well use it because this is the future. Um, and the other thing I like is this is the perfect way for a lot of companies to just go out there and like you were saying, just try it, you know, just get a taste for blockchain. Does it work with your company? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? Um, and of course you pay as you go. So, you know, if you don't want to use it that often, mm -hmm. that's fine. No problem. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely overall just a genius concept and it's going to for sure go a very long way. Definitely. And the last thing I wanted to say about the UBT token setup is, you know, for, for you, if you're not an enterprise, you're sitting there, okay, I don't have an enterprise business. I don't work for a big enterprise and I don't do IT. So why would I care? I think if you're a, someone who's interested in UBT, what's interesting is that 
you can still have access to UBT as maybe a speculative investment, maybe small, you know, people that like you that want to just set up an app on your own and just see how it works. You can still use these tools and they're in beta. Now you can check them out um, live, but these big enterprises, the benefit that they're giving you is whenever they sign on to use UBT based services, they are going to lock up in sort of a, I guess like a, an SLA, like a service level agreement, a certain number of UBT tokens that will cover 30 days of usage that they've estimated using that calculator tool. What that means is all those things, that, all those UBT tokens that they've locked up are now out of supply, right? They're out of the circuit, they're out of circulation, oh. right? So theoretically, the more businesses that use UBT and their tools and are you know, locking it up and, and continuing to do 30 day contracts with this UBT locked up, the more valuable it could become for you mm -hmm. uh, because obviously more interest, more demand tends to drive value if supply is fixed, right? Or supply is dropping. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. So the more that what, UBT grows, the better you are. Question for you. Sure. Um, is there a baseline price for uh, companies using UBT? For example, you know, say they say it's 10 UBT to integrate this. Um, uh, what if UBT goes up to $500 a token? Yeah, great point. So I think, I think that the, and, and I might not have all the details on this cause I'm still reading up on the, the contract structure for the UBT transactions, but I believe that you can, you lock in on a contract for 30 days of usage. And I think today, I mean, we're, we're still in the sense for, you know, for UBT, mm -hmm. you lock in at that price. And then at the end of your term, if you continue, you can rebuy the, tokens that you've already locked up in that contract at that fixed price, right? So I think you'll mm -hmm. be able to keep your costs st like standard and static, but then if your contract expires, I think with, you know, as an enterprise, then they have to con like purchase at market value. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I believe the last time I saw them talk about the price uh, on a medium post. They, mm -hmm. they up, I believe it was originally 10 cents or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they up it to 42 cents uh, not too long ago, but I don't quote me on that. Yeah. I mean, look, a lot of this stuff is, is still, is still developing and we're still learning more about how these things work behind the scenes, because quite frankly, this is all really recent, you know, especially mm -hmm. baseline protocol and all of their, um, you know, framework items, the four framework items we talked about, they're still rapidly changing and developing. So I think this is something to follow and continue to follow over time because it's a project that I think has a ton of potential. Of course, of course. Absolutely. So Ryan, where can people find you? Where can people find the awesome partnership video that we just recorded as well? If you guys want to check out the partnership video where I dive into obviously all the juicy partnerships and really give you a good understanding as to how Unibright is already massive and definitely undervalued as a uh, startup. Um, go ahead to my YouTube channel, CryptoFiend, F-I-E-N-D, or, or it will also be linked down below. Um, and as always, make sure you subscribe to Hashoshi if you're not already. Right on, man. Thanks. Doing my job for me, man. Thank you. Awesome. And guys, please do have a good rest of your day, night, evening, wherever you are in the world. Cheers. Have a great one.